Let me know if my head is all the way out. We'll do. Or if I'm cut off. So I think everybody's here because that's all the chairs. I think we have a real full house today. So, oh, you made it. I'm glad that you're here. I saw them over at the shops. So, um, is this everyone? Has everyone been here before or anyone first time to the festival? First time. First time. First time. A lot of first time. To the wow. olive. But Have, the to the olive. But you've been maybe to the lavender. And festival. all the other yeah. ones almost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's also, that's the two, big two weekends in June. I always come to that. I love it. So we're we're really honored that they're featuring our olive. This is a, a per, so uh, let me just make sure this is going. I get there. It is. So um, this olive is, um, a Peruvian olive. It's a that we're going to be featuring and talking about today. We're going to talk in in general about uh, the the name of the, the talk today is the art of uh, artisan olive curing. And there's different ways to cure olives. As you probably all know, all olives have to be cured because they're just impalatably bitter when they come off the tree. Um, so it's impossible. You couldn't even get it down you know, if you've ever tried that. Um, it's impossible to eat all right off the tree, so they have to be cured in some manner. The old world way of doing that was fermentation. Um, a lot of people have departed from that in a lot of foods nowadays, though it's making kind of this resurgence, you might have heard, in popular food culture. Um, people think it's a new thing, but it's not new at all, because it's been around for, for as long as man has been around, as long as humanity's been around. Uh, and in, in fact, before us, as long as life has been on the earth, there's been a form of fermentation and breakdown and, and uh, microbial transformation and, and uh, which we'll talk about more later but um, we figured out at one point sort of how to harness or guide or, or control that process and then have favorable results in food you experience that already a lot obviously in things obvious things like wine uh, beer uh, breads coffee uh, kimchi uh, Sauerkraut, what's that one? Cheese. And what? Cheese. Yeah, yeah. So there's and there is no food that you can't ferment, by the way. But we're not going deep into fermentation, but we're gonna but we, we it, it is very relevant to this curing. So this olive, that's how it's that's how it's cured. And it's a simple process. It's uh, just put in spring water and uh, salt and then sealed where there's no air and, and big vats that are about this big. And they stay in there for about two, two and a half months. And then the fermentation process is cured, is finished, and then the curing, pro which is the curing process, it's finished and then uh, they're rinsed, uh, they're pitted, and they're dried, and then they're ready to go, which you'll taste them in a few minutes, and they're really delicious. Um, the way most olives, people don't do that anymore, that's the old world, and this farm where these come from in Peru, um, are, uh, it's a third generation, they just won't do it any other way, and it's kind of a lost art as far as olives go. There are a few places that still do it, but very few. Most people cure olives with lye or, you know, it's a, it's a caustic uh, uh, chemical, basically, and you have to rinse it out. What happens with the lye is you're actually killing a lot of the uh, bacteria and the, the natural good things that are in the olive, and also the flavor the aroma and whatnot. So by doing it through this slow process, oh, so the comparison, the reason most companies who produce olives do it that way nowadays is because it's just time and money. They don't want to spend the time in the fermentation. Fermentation, like I said, two, two and a half months. Uh, lye, 12 hours. So it's a huge commitment and time difference. And like most of our food that's being fast processed, it isn't, many companies aren't doing things because they're mindful of of taste, quality, and nutrient value, it's just it's just money. They want to get the food out there fast, and they want to produce huge volumes of it, and they want to keep it on the shelves for extended amounts of time. But the irony of that is, um, and maybe it's not, is is that fermentation actually preserves and keeps an olive or any food uh, around longer. So this olive, when you open this, it doesn't have to be refrigerated like olives that are cured in lye, it's already, you know, it's already preserved. So fermentation process, this is a, it's a lacto-fermentation, um, lactic acid, 
uh, or an anaerobic fermentation. And that's anaerobic just means a lack of oxygen. So you have to keep the oxygen out of it. It's something, it isn't really uh, that complicated. It's actually so sillily stu s s uh, simple that um, you know you can do it and there's a lot of, we're not, this class, this isn't a class to teach you how to do it, but there's a lot of videos online that, uh, has anybody knowingly had a, an olive that's been ferment through a fermentation curing process? I have a question. Yes. The, the, what I have bought in the past, the oil cured olives. They, which what olives? The oil cured olives is what they say. Is that the yes. olive? That's another. They're all shriveled up. Yeah, yeah, okay. right. Like this olive yeah, is yeah. kind of shriveled. So that's another legitimate way to cure. You can cure them in, and it's basically a way of seasoning. It's water and, and oil, and it's a, another way to. And they're probably, I don't know which one you bought, but they're probably curing it the same way. So this just sit long enough, and basically, um, fermentation is we've just learned to harness or control or guide the process, like I said, we learned at one point. So, so we're getting desirable bacteria and preventing the undesirable ones. Um, and I know that we sort of live in this age of the assault or the war on bacteria, but we don't, we don't realize that, um, and I'm kind of going into this as a side point because that's one of the, of eating any fermented food, including an olive that has been fermented, one of the benefits is you're getting uh, healthful bacteria, which you, you can't survive without, right? So we, we kind of, we're, we're afraid of bacteria and we've also, because of this cultural thing that we're in that all of us have in our lifetimes have been a part of, this sort of like all this war on bacteria, um, there's things, you know, it's chlorinated water, it's, um, it's uh, antibacterial cleansing products um, and things like that and, and, and cleaning products. So if you, if you come in contact with any of these things, and you inevitably do, you're, you're lowering your, uh, the bacteria and the microorganisms that are in your body and they're in your stomach. So my doctor even told me at Eisenhower, so mainstream doctors are coming around to this, he said, these things that we always do, we over antiseptic, we overdo that and, it, and your skin's very absorbent. I'll just digress on this a second, but it's just affirming or kind of reinforcing to all of you the importance of if there's a way that you can get more uh, bacteria and microorganisms into your gut, but I'll, I'll go back and finish my point, the better it is. So um, if you come in contact with these things, you're, you're narrowing the amount or at least the diversity of these microorganisms, microorganisms and bacteria that are in your, in, your, in your stomach. So you hear a lot about um, trying to get more diversity in there. We call those probiotics. It's one thing that you hear about. You hear a lot about that nowadays. A lot of people are lacking probiotics. And I'm told and I've read a lot of studies, this is why. My doctor said, eat dirt. Get your hands in the dirt. Remember when we were a kid? I remember when I was a kid, dirt glistened. It was shiny. It had worms. It had bacteria. It was alive. Dirt is a living organism. That's why they say good dirt. When you get a good wine, they, the, you know, the wine, the big wine guys, they, they'll taste the, yeah, they'll taste the dirt and make sure that it's a, you know, they're into that. Same thing with this or good food. I always say that about a farmer at the farmers markets when I find they have, you know, great. Jared's one of those guys that is that way. I always say he has great dirt. This is a, a farmer that we know that does the farmer's market in the Coachella Valley. And uh, he has the most amazing root vegetables and garlic and everything because he's just got living, alive, beautiful dirt. But we've been killing it with, you know, Roundup and chemicals and herbicides and pesticides and things like this. So that's why the organic movement, by the way, everything here is, is organic, certified organic. The olive is, the olive oil I'm going to use today is, as well, and uh, even this cucumber, which I got with Pat Ralph's. And, uh, <laughs> and the avocados, they actually have some pretty good organic, they've expanded their organic uh, section. That's another thing, a lot of people, some people don't understand the importance of organic, they think, oh, it's just more expensive. By the way, some things are not, you know, there's some, some things are just a few cents between organic vegetables and others. Watermelon, that's not true, you know, there's several dollars sometimes. But, but most things, the difference between organic is just is pennies often. Um, and we pay so much for chips or other things like that, so I figure. But the main thing about organic, it isn't, it's all about the farm. It isn't guaranteeing that the quality is gonna be better or it's gonna last longer. That's up to the dirt and the farmer and, and the variety of the, the, the olive or the, the vegetable. Um, it's, it, organic just means no chemicals. That's all it means. 
no, no herbicides, chemical fertilizers, and pesticides. And those things that we keep putting into our body that they're starting to see have uh, consequences that aren't good. Well, so back to our fermentation process, that preserves these natural good bacteria. It keeps the bad ones out and preserves the good ones, just to state it really simply. Um, so because of the anaerobic process or the lack of oxygen, um, the kind of bacteria that are harmful to humans don't survive in that environment. This kind of fermentation with that, without oxygen and it creates a bit of an acidic. These, these olives are cured for, like I said, nine or 10 weeks-ish, um, you know, a couple months, a little more, two and a half months. Um, the, uh, and it creates a pH that's between 3.8 and 4.2, which is just a little bit on the acidic side, and that's what those bad, uh, again, stating it simply, bacteria and, and things can't live in that environment. And then that continues on because we've set that precedence uh, in the olives, so that preserves them. So that's one of the big uh, benefits to ferment, fermented food, where we're preserving the food, we're keeping it from decaying or or rotting because we've controlled the, the process and um, we also get a more flavorful food any food that's fermented uh, including this olive so this olive it's it's um, natural flavors its aroma uh, that is from the tree is is preserved and I think you'll, you'll taste that it's uh, it's a it's a uh, robust flavor but it's at the same time I it's you know things are a mixture right it's also, I call it a mild olive, so it's not, it's not a real strong taste. It's a black olive. All olives are black, by the way. There's no such thing as a green olive tree. That's just a, they pick olives because of preference at different times in the season. You can probably learn those things around here, but um, there isn't an olive tree of the, I think, 350 some odd variety of olive trees that produces green olives. Now, if you let them all ripen fully, they will all be black. Um, the first they are is green and you can pick them. They actually still have the same, I've read, nutrient value, a uh, green olive. The next they become kind of purplish, and then they're sort of purplish green, and then they're purplish black, and then finally when they're fully ripe, they're a, they're a black color. So they're picked at all different stages. The ones in the can, you, you know what we all put in our fingers at Thanksgiving? Um, <laughs> I did. Um, so, <laughs> Those, Where did they go? What's that? Where did they go? You can put them on the table and the kids are wearing them. The kids are all wearing them, right. But those, remember they say, in the, they're in a can and they say black, ripe olives. Well, the thing is, those are neither. <laughs> they're not black and they're not ripe. They're, uh, they're smaller, they're usually a, an immature green olive that they pick and then they cook the heck out of it. Uh, not with heat, but with chemicals. So they put it in... Um, a uh, combination of things like lye and, and um, uh, uh, iron salts and all these really, you know, caustic, highly, highly alkaline things. And um, and by the way, you know, alkaline, you don't want to, people talk about being, I'm going to digress into this second, talk about, oh, I want to be more alkaline. Or I want to be fully alkaline. No, you don't. Because <laughs> fully alkaline burns through metal. You also don't want to be fully acidic because that also burns through metal. So the most, acid, so there's on the pH scale from here to here, What's the most acidic thing that we, we have in our battery acid? So that's the most acidic thing. You know, ouch, stay away, it'll cut through metal. And then the, the most, you know what the most alkaline thing is, which is also dangerous, is lye, the thing they cure olives with. So that's on the other end. Also will burn through metal. When you use lye, if you, can, you can learn how to also cure olives with lye in 12 hours, and then you have to rinse them for days and days and days and days because you've got to have that lye out there or it could kill you. Um, they tell you in all the YouTube videos, wear a face shield, wear sleeves, wear gloves. You can't, if any of it splashes on your skin, it's just like acid, you know, you just have to, but you know, on the other end. So either end will burn. This is about in the middle, 3.3, but a little on the acidic side. Again, it's a good thing because that is those harmful food uh, uh, bacteria that you don't want can't live in 3.8 to 4.2-ish. Uh, they need a more uh, alkaline uh, environment. But of course, lye curing is so alkaline. <coughs> that's a different thing. So, um, what about the uh, cocktail olives? You know, the little ones with the. You know, um, oh yeah, so I, I'll tell you about that, I, I, which is I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but, but it depends on the olive. I'm not sure what. Do you mean the ones that have the little. Um, 
uh, yeah, the, the pimento in the middle. Yeah, Those are usually, I don't know which brand, lye cured. Almost all olives are cured in, in lye. And then they pit them and then they stuff a little um, pimento in there. The ones that I've seen. And you have to taste that. It kind of kills the flavor of the, I mean, if it's in a cocktail, it doesn't matter, I suppose. You know, right. The flavor, right? Because the alcohol is going to overpower the, the flavor. But those little black olives, to finish those, they just cook them in that soup of really acidic, I mean, well, actually, it's a very alkaline um, uh, chemicals, and then they come really rubbery, and they lo and they're from a variety of uh, trees, but they they have no characteristic left because they're just sort of rubbery and plain. Anyway, so back to our olive um, and the olives that are here today. So everything I'm using today, by the way, is from the farm. Uh, oh, sorry, not the cucumber or the avocados, but. We have a chipotle salt. I also have a salt that doesn't have a spice in it, which is just a, a culinary, a coarse culinary salt. We're going to sprinkle a little of that and try it. And then I have some of the lavender uh, olive oil as well that we'll try, which is really good. The lavender and rosemary. And then we're going to we're going to be using a um, manchego, a Spanish cheese. Uh, it's about eight months aged. And then we're going to also use what's the other one that they gave me? Is it the Swiss? You have a Swiss. Uh, the cheese, are you familiar with that one? Maybe not. No, they just told me about the Manchego. Manchego, and then he also brought, uh, Richard brought, a, anyway, doesn't matter, I can't remember the name of it, but it, it's a it's a mild Swiss, but it has another name. Holy cow. Is that it? Oh, that might be it. <laughs> it sounds like it. Yeah, I don't know. It was the holy cow. They'll know over there. I think it's the only Swiss that Highland Springs has, just right over here. And the olives also are, we're very honored that they're being featured and sold here in the marketplace. Um, so, uh, and this is our brand. And that's where I'm from, Zebra Organics. I'm one of the founders of Zebra Organics. So we work with, with farms with a variety of foods and we have a facility in Palm Springs of our kitchens and, and warehouse where we import to and we, we manufacture and, and, and process and package food there. But that's where these olives come from. Peru and then there and here. So first of all, why don't we just, oh, let's see, I'm going to waste the time. Why don't we try, while well, I'm talking about it, the olive, and this is a good point. Is there any questions at this point? Will we, will we transition to the next topic and Question, try the olive? Does it yeah. have to be dry? No. No. You, know, you can ferment, cure an olive and, and, and not dry it. You can keep it in, in liquid. But this is just the way we do these because we like them. So first of all, everybody really just needs to try an olive. Uh, see what you think. So we're going to try it by, or by itself first. So there's nothing, this olive isn't seasoned, it's simply cured in uh, spring water and salt. That's it. So the saltiness that you taste in there. Um, here you guys, you want to... And then after it's cured... Okay. What's that? Excuse me, after it's cured then you dry it? That's right. It's cured. It comes out of the big bats. Um, did you get one? And then is it sun dried? Um, I could lie and take another one. You got, well, <laughs> we have more. We can get more. But I just want you guys to start out with um, trying one first. And uh, there's uh, here. Oh, I got two on there. He got kind of a dry one, so let him try another one. Um, here you are, sir. Uh, and uh, come on, get in the spoon. There we are. You're welcome. Okay. Um, so the, the curing, and then they are uh, rinsed, and then they're dried and pitted, and that's all a hand process. And and again, the curing is for. Well, you got to. The curing is for. Uh, well, my goodness. There you go. Did you want it? There you go. Did you buy that in the market like that? Yes. Yeah. These are, um, yeah. Uh, in fact, they're selling them today in, in the marketplace at the all oh. festival. I'm just saying. What's that? Well, they're not really. You can taste a little. No, we don't add any salt to them. Like a fresh salsa. Just the salt is in the in the curing process, but they're rinsed and rinsed and rinsed. I didn't taste salt. I taste rinsed. It has a lot of flavor. They, well, that's the natural flavor. She just said it has a lot of flavor. And that's the natural flavor of the olive, the smell, the aroma. Well, I should have had you guys sniff them also. As we, but, um, and that's what's preserved by this sort of old world 
taking more time process of so how long did, curing did that take to get to that stage to uh this is uh two two and a half months of curing okay yeah. and, and, then, and then another few days of rinsing and then it's just oh and then uh and then the drying process takes a few days it, it, all of these numbers vary a little depending on the season and temperatures and that's just sun dry then that's right yeah okay. yeah wow. just a simple dry you can dry them uh in, there's a, two ways that are valid. You can dry them in a dehydrator or a sun dryer. Both are, both are valid and won't kill or cook the olive. So in this olive, you, you have also the, the nutrients and whatnot available. So it's, it's got a vitamin level. And don't be, I know we've also got scared away of salt kind of. And, and there's also problems happening where people are getting nowadays too little salt. Without salt, you won't survive. Actually, not even a half an hour. <laughs> you know, your, your blood is full of salt. You talk about electrolytes. The number one electro electrolytes are just minerals, right? And even, it's even in Gatorade. You know, whenever you get to electrolyte up, uh, the primary electrolytes or the, or the minerals that are electrolytes are salt, potassium, magnesium. Uh, Oh, I forgot the name. But uh, you need you need those, and and, and a bit of sugar uh, as well, which helps the uptake the salt. So if you don't have those in your blood, in the right combination, uh, and the same thing, you need all of these proper uh, microorganisms and bacteria for gut health. And there's a lot of science now that's finding out that it regulates our mood. Our, our stomach is what's regulating the the chemistry, and our stomach is regulating our depression, our mood, our, uh, our immune system, uh, how we're able to fight off disease and whatnot. And this is why some scientists or doctors are saying that that's a problem because our, our, gut, our gut flora and fauna, our probiotic or the bacteria in our gut is either decreasing and or the diversity of it is decreasing. So any, any kind you can eat a fermented food, you're increasing that. Um, uh, your immune system and, and it's just healthier. It's like mama used to be, you know, it's like, remember in the old days we took time, we made things, we, we, you know, everything had a little, you, you cook the soup for a long time and it developed this, you know, it was like, it was a, we gave certain soups for colds and whatnot because there is medicinal uh, properties in, in, in living, in living foods. Plus the other benefit is they're more flavorful. They just, they just taste better. Uh, the food industry finds ways to sort of fool us um, in, in adding flavorings and things in them. And, and, but originally, the, the science behind it was we're attracted to foods that are good for us because they just taste good. And you kind of know, oh, my body needs that, so I, so I want that. But we've kind of thrown that off a little bit. So how did everyone, did everyone yes. like the olives? Yes. Yes. Is that different than yes. many olives you've tasted yeah. before? Oh, That's the reaction. And I'm, these are dangerous for me to open because I will just eat them all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're like, I just snack on them. Yeah. So they make an excellent for, and I'm gonna show you now some pairing, but you can put them out, uh, you know, just in a bowl on, I think on a coffee table or whatever along, you know, with other things. So they make a great appetizer or just, you know, with. A, a starter with beverages or drinks when you're they make a really really good pairing to different things uh, and also then it's very easy to put them with maybe you know, hummus and mm. some slices of cucumber or something and, and uh, you have a plate uh, also they're excellent in pasta salads of course uh, and other dishes you can chop them up and put them in a variety of sauces and things like that so um, yeah so what they so let's see. What I'm going to do is while we're on this, by the way, the spoon I used today, I, it was so cute. I, was, I had some time before we started, so I was shopping over. This is a little, these are olive wood from olive trees. And I was going to use my bamboo cutting board today, but I used, because I bought this new beautiful olive wood cutting board over in the galleries and a little little olive bowl. So I like olive wood. This is a, I think that's a cashew wood, these other ones that I brought. Um, but what I'm going to do, well, this one's a little easier to scoop out of. So I'm going to start slicing some things up. So I'm going to pass this around because we don't, I, I thought we, we have enough, uh, plenty of olives to, for everybody to try them again. Would you all like to try another yes. olive? Have another olive one <laughs> so what I would do is just take this spoon, I guess I'll have to eat one to demonstrate. Um, but yeah. Take the spoon and just drop it in your hand. That way we keep it sanitary and then rather than, and just drop, that way the spoon doesn't touch anyone. 
and then put you that. Do you want us to on. save that for anything else you're going to give us, or no? You, just you eat it? this. Okay. Have it all. We're going to have another okay. olive. Pass it around. Snip them if you like to get the aroma, mm -hmm. and then while you do that, I'm going to I'm going to show us kind of how to. I'm going to do some pairings and show us what we can do to. Um, I'm amazed that as um, I was eating it to taste the actual olive oil, you know, because you don't get that with mm -hmm. canned olives. No. You don't. You know, it's, it's just soupier. different. Know well, most certainly the canned ones, like I said, those yeah. are just like rubber. And I think we should. Uh, <laughs> There's nothing left some, in that olive. Some, some they just cook the heck out of it. Those are fine. They're fine. And if you can't get a kid to eat an olive, yeah. maybe they eat that. But, um, <laughs> you know. But this is preserving that, those layers and that texture of flavor, which so much food used to have more of. Let me grab another bag of olive oil. Oh, yeah. um, we'll get some more of those out. Excellent. Um, just with the music and everything, it's just relaxed. If you want to, if you want to recognize what it looks like, like I said, these are, these are here today. And so you can read about it. I'll start this on this end, and you can pass this around if you want to look at it or read the bag and read about. Oh, is that one of the? Those are Yeah, it's a botija. Is all. No, that's one. The new label has the certified organic seal on it because we got the certification on it now. But they are they are they are certified organic. But I, I grabbed a bag without the little seal. Right. Okay, so let's do this. Peruvian. So, like a lot of people are gluten free Peruvian. nowadays. So, I one of my favorite little um, is just uh, appet appetizers is um, I use a cucumber slice. I also have some crackers as a as kind of a cracker, and I'll show you what we can do with that. I'm glad it's a size group because we have plenty for everybody and and. Uh, it's easier to get it because boy, it's too big. It, it takes forever to get every, everything to it. So we can do a little bit more today for just for fun. So, um, uh, so what I do is slice. Oh, and while we're doing this, any more questions about the curing process or this olive? Well, olive oil. Do they, they don't have to cure the olive and before they squeeze the oil out? Um, I, Lorraine, do you know that? What's that? Do, do they have to cure an olive before, why don't I know that? Before the olive oil is squeezed? No. No, okay. So the olive oil doesn't have to be cured. It's the olive. Yeah. They have a guy in the big tent demoing, throwing the green olives into a meat grinder. And, and making seeds and all. Really? really? And then a smasher that filters the mush into the oil. Yeah. yeah. It makes olive oil different as a season. Yeah, no. Season. <laughs> right. The winter olives. Because of their the ripeness. ripeness. Right. Right, which makes sense. Then so they taste totally different. It can different. make it different. Green and sometimes it's golden. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've seen that. I, I've been a little bit around olive oil, but I'm so entrenched in the olive world that I don't pay much attention to the processing it. But I know you know, Lorraine is a, is a chef. She's a, and she has a beautiful restaurant, uh, Luscious Lorraine's in Palm Desert. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, she's, she's a very, very good chef. She's been uh, kind of an acclaimed known chef. And um, her restaurant is really delicious if you get a chance to go there. And we're honored because she uses some of our uh, our ingredients at her place, our coconut oil and our honey. Greek salad. That's right, and the olives. Quinoa Greek salad. Oh, which is amazing. Chop them up really fine. They give it that right. Quinoa doesn't have much flavor, so you want to put that saltiness in there. So the olive brings that out a little bit. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, all of her salads and wraps and desserts. She's an expert with sweets, cookies, and little lovely pastries. Now, what am I doing? I'm talking. What I'm doing. All right. <laughs> Good thing I'm not chewing gum. Um, all right, so. Then I'm going to take a little avocado. This is all organic, and um, we only had 15 minutes to come and kind of carry everything in from the car and set up. So I'd have had all this pre-done, but it's actually better if we do it fresh, right? Because when you cut things fresh, it's better. So uh, let me know if anybody doesn't like any of these ingredients. I can I can make one and leave it off for you. So. 
So if, let me know if anybody doesn't like cucumber. I have crackers, but we're going to let everybody try crackers too. If you don't like uh, avocado, I can leave it off. Then I'm going to put the olive on there, obviously. And then a little bit of salt. So this is an heirloom variety of tree. Uh, it's a it's an old tree that the, the olives grow. You notice how they're a little a bit more plump, so they, they grow real big and plump and beautiful. And these farmers in Peru, about a couple hours south of Lima, they're just a you know multi generation family, and they just love these olives into existence. They they. Uh, do it in just the most caring, detailed, and uh, traditional way. Uh, what is the price on this package? You know, I don't know what they're charging here. I would imagine it's somewhere between 16 and $18, I think, is the retail. Different people charge different prices for them in stores. Probably somewhere in there. Um, which, it's eight ounces, you know, and that it's a good amount of olives, so it's actually a it's actually a reasonable price. Yeah, because these are dried. You're getting the full product there. Yeah, for that, for this kind of a quality uh, of a food, I think it's a really good price. All right, so we're going to start with the. Um, excuse me. Okay, so we'll try that. I could just, you're right. What the heck? <laughs> you're actually right. And that ha helps yeah. keep it on there a little bit better. Kind of like a little sandwich. All right. I washed my hands just before I did this. <laughs> I know what you're all thinking. Actually, the CDPH came to our facility and they said, oh, a washed human hand is far cleaner than these gloves, which harbor bacteria and stuff like that. But that's just if you're handling money and you're going back and forth, like I, so I'm not gonna shake anybody's hand here or whatnot if you do that. But as long as you wash your hands and have, and you know, you see chefs in kitchens, they put their whole hands and mix the pasta or whatever you're doing, um, as long as it's washed. But, um, Okay, I think we got it. Uh, one. Oh no! I have, uh, maybe at the end, I, if anyone is interested, I can show you pictures of the farm and the big bats that these cure in. It's just because we had limited time wiring up my laptop and everything. Still wouldn't have been started. Uh, Takes a little extra time. So you can also do what I'm doing right now with a cracker, I think. But uh, and again, like you can just serve them right in the bowl. Okay, there it is. So now we're just going to put just a tiny bit of salt. This is uh, I'm starting out with a, a an unflavored salt. So this is a, it's actually called a Celtic sea salt. Um, it's a, also a, a sun-dried salt uh, that's high in minerals, like just a natural, you know, ocean sea salt. So do you have an opinion over which is better, Himalayan or Celtic? Because I've heard both. Um, I, I like them both. I use, yeah, the, I have them both in my kitchen. I like them both. I, I've heard stuff, but I don't know because I'm not a scientist and I haven't studied it. Uh, somebody told me, David Jubb, Dr. Jubb, he says this. He says he thinks that the minerals aren't as high in Himalayan because it's from a stone that was from thousands of years ago in a mountain that was an ocean, so he prefers salt out of the ocean. That's my preference too, but Himalayan has its place for seasoning. But you know, there's um, there's so many types of salt. I didn't even know, and for instance, there's a show, there's a lady, I think she's Persian, on Netflix, and it's called Salt, Heat, Fat, something like that. And she's talking about, you know, because all food is a combination of salt, uh, heat, fat, and maybe one other thing that's required. Even if the fat is avocado or oil or whatever. Or you can talk more about that. But it, I've been learning a lot about food anthropology, which, by the way, talk about fermentation. It's in every culture. 
it's just it's waned a bit in certain cultures and we're sort of rediscovering it now oh you're on time okay but, so here we go you can just grab one of those off of there so what this is is simply just a, a organic english cucumber sorry the water there you see that um and uh the avocado and just a little sprinkle you know sometimes you only need a little one one little guy thank you oh you know i should have napkins <laughs> I didn't think of that. Just like our fingers. Oh, good. Okay, I'll grab those in a minute. Yeah. 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 It's, it's all going to get a little avocado y and oily, especially you're going to get Because I didn't stack that one well. It's my fault. Yeah. And, um. You guys are. Awesome. For you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, whichever one you like. Awesome. Yeah, this is good. You guys grab with that. I'm going to get them some napkins. You can even pass that down if you want. Right here, you can pass these down. These, uh. Whoops. Maybe I'll start some of this in. Um, yeah, Monchego, it's an eight month age. That's also, they, they pull that right out of the marketplace here. So it's one of the cheeses being, it's also on their platter that they serve. Um, oh, awesome. Well, we just did napkins. And um, thank you so much. How was your food? Awesome. Well, yeah, yeah. And try one of those, you guys, off of the plate because we have plenty. Now, we can also do that. This is their uh, chipotle salt, which I'm really fond of. Oh, anyway, in this show uh, on Netflix, it says salt, fat, and acid is the name of the show. And yeast, and it's a documentary series. This woman is fascinating. I'm learning things that I didn't know. I've been studying food anthropology already, but man, does she go into it. And she actually travels to Italy and they make pasta and, and she talks to people there. They travel to um, Mexico and they make they make I think it was food that she just she's going to the Middle East, France. Fascinating. And one of the things she she goes to Japan. And she asked the guy in salt remember this part? How many salts, how many varieties of salts are there in Japan? It's a staggeringly large number. Who, anybody want to guess how many salts there are just in Japan? How many varieties of salts? Four. Seven. Uh, seven. No. Four thousand. Four thousand. Oh, you said fifty-seven. Fifty-seven times where I get it. Yeah, I get it. Um, so, uh, I have another salt because I, I'd like you guys just, even though this isn't about the salt, I mean there's food for the salt. I want you guys to try this. Just for fun. It is so much fun. All right. Oh, you know what would be better? Oh, no, this thing is better. Just use this little guy. And if you want to try just a little bit of this chipotle salt by itself, pass that around and just put that in there. What is it? Uh, they, they, they have it here. It's a chipotle salt. Yeah, I just got the chipotle seasoning. You just joined us? Yeah, I just came from the direction. Welcome. You just came from, and you bought some chipotle salt. Sure. Well, what is that? This one is the garlic habanero. The garlic habanero. Oh, wow. See, there's an example. But I love to have all kinds of salts. And it's just so fun to season with different kinds of salts. <coughs> Welcome. For those of you who just walked in, we're talking about the art of artisan. Look at she's got a variety of salts. So you came at the right time. The art of artisan olive curing. So it's fermentation versus lye curing which is a more healthful way of, of curing an olive. It's just, it takes two, remember we said two, two and a half months. And um, we'll have a quiz, because somebody's gonna win a, at the end a bag of olives. So uh, we're giving away today. So, I should tell you that first, so you can pay more attention. <laughs> so um, uh, the, uh, 
because it takes you know that long two two and a half months for fermentation most places don't do that because lye curing oh, takes 12, 12 hours you know. but it gives you a more nutrient and you're actually feeding your probiotics and your uh, your diversity and, and getting good bacteria into your you know into your system all right so why don't we do this um let's try oh, let's try one with a uh with your crackers these crackers are from the platter today, right? That's out here in the tasting area. And what cheese was that that we just had? That was the eight-month Manchego, which is Spanish cheese. And you can get a young Manchego, you can get a year, you can get more than a year. Which is sheep. Uh, it's a sheep. Yeah, thank you. You're right. It's a sheep cheese. It's very salty, And uh, it's really, really... Oh, it's very so good to slice a piece and just stick it on the piece of pan stove. Oh, yeah. So you're Did you can get off the stove. Good. Very it's good. It's so not delicious? Yeah, it's nice salt. salt. Try the olive by, by itself. Let me you know, put it in your hand. Yeah, then we don't touch it. It might not be salty. So then what else do you do? All right, come here. Is that enough? Oh, you can make it for 22 people. I like to melt it first. Can we just count it? Toast. Yeah, you can count those. Oh, oh. Here goes the <laughs> spoon. <laughs> oh, how many? And that gets half in front of I'll put I'll put one more. Yeah, we can always come back with him more. All right, so I'm gonna put these on. And you can um, you get more. Let me see. You can put some on too, but if you do, because you probably want to you can put them on. And I didn't mean they're dirty, they're just a human hand is cleaner. I'm sorry, they they, they harder more, they have problems, but people also don't have um good use of them because sometimes they'll keep them on and touch them on. Right. Um, but the guy is washed out and touched this way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, you put those on there. And then, now, should we just, why don't, just for a different thing, I'm the fat I'm going to use this time is the cheese and the olive oil. Uh, we won't put the uh, avocado on it this time. How did everybody like that? Did you guys get to try the, did you get to try the, okay, the cucumber? You, okay, so I'll make you, Okay. I'll make you one of those also. And you tried the salt? No, they didn't get the salt. Here. Where's the little uh, wood? Yeah. No, <laughs> don't ask. You have it. Yeah, don't. <laughs> there, you just dip that. You fell. Oh, it yeah. fell. Okay, so I'll just put it away. Yes. Um, we don't know who did I'll give you a spoon. I have a. Here you are. This is a clean, <laughs> clean spoon, a little bamboo spoon, and you just put a little in your hand and taste it off your hand. This is the same thing. And so, uh, let's see. Let, let's put on the olive, and then that goes over that. So let's put one olive. One in each one. One, one olive on each one. And you guys didn't try the cucumber olive avocado yet, did you? All right, so I'll make you that. So, and then we're going to drizzle a little the lab. This is from the lavender, the lavender from the lavender fields. Did you guys come to the lavender festival? Yes. yes. That's another. All of the festivals are great here. The fermentation festival, which a lot of what we talked today is relevant. You've already got to kind of, if you haven't been to that, you got a sneak peek about the fermentation festival today. And the importance of fermented food that we just have gotten so far away from. But I'm really happy that. It's kind of there's a re renewed awareness about fermenting food and how how good for it is, how healthy it is for us. So it's, it's coming back around. Are these so different? They're all the same. So I can put these on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Those are all the same. Yeah, you can absolutely put those right on. And then I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil, make a mess, and then I'm gonna get them so put the cucumber on there. Wonderful. It's pretty hot. Yeah. That was rather interesting with the cucumber and the combination that you did. Yeah. Isn't that? I just would never have thought of it. That's why I wanted to do it, just to give everybody a, and, you know, it's easy to do at home. These cucumbers are two bucks for the organic ones, you know, and a dollar ninety five for me for a cucumber, and it's cheaper than a box of crackers. And also it's absolutely yeah. gluten free. Because yeah. everything we gave you, the cheese, the cucumber, uh, we put a, the olive and a little avocado. Now we're going to do this. Yeah, now we're going to do, where's that uh, chipotle salt? There it is. Now on this one, we're going to try to spice it up a little with a chipotle salt. So what I'm going to do first is drizzle a little bit of olive oil on there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Comes out I don't have a pour spout. Yeah, well, it's going to be messy. 
Uh, if nobody minds, you can put your finger on finger. the end of it. And yeah. then yeah. Right. Just All right. Like, I'm going to suit up for this. <laughs> <laughs> you have a pour. You, you have, have a pour? Thank you. That's awesome. That's my pleasure. <laughs> Alright. With your ungloved hand, you have an ungloved hand fling. Did you pull my hair out of my apron? Out of my is it in my apron? No, it's Oh it's not. So thank you. I thought it, it felt caught or something. Never mind. Thank you. Okay. So I don't want to talk anything else. Um Oh, lovely. And that's which olive oil is that? That's all. That's all. Which one is it? This one's the regular olive oil that we sell in the market. Okay, well, it's okay. We're doing the regular olive oil. The little lavender over there. <laughs> yeah, we'll just see. Well, this will be much easier and less messier. So this Chipotle salt they sell here, huh? The Chipotle salt and these olive oils and the cheeses are all sold here. Well, and the olives, the olives, because they're now having our olive in here as well. They're looking at our honey too, but we're, this is not a honey yeah, so we're talking about olives. <coughs> olives. <coughs> they, you, you, there's some beautiful honeys available here as well. If you guys haven't tried their honeys, they do a, a rosemary honey. Very unlikely, right? When I first th th saw that, I thought, rosemary honey. I don't think so. And I tried it, it's become my favorite. And they do it here. All right, so that's it. Now we just do a little of the salt. It's going to be quicker if I just do this. I want to regulate just how much I don't think I got. Because you're not going to put a whole lot of that on you. A salt? salt? Yeah. No, I'm not. Do you want one without salt? Yeah. 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 Just leave this corner here. Leave this over here. Okay, we'll do a couple of unsalted. <laughs> But remember, don't be too wise. Well, you asked her. I'm not going to ask her. But it's bad if you don't get enough. But it's like everything, right? Too much of something is bad. What's, everything in moderation. The Greek said, Madasto, Madadista, what's the Latin? Something like that. And, uh, I didn't know I was quoting somebody. What? <laughs> I didn't know I was quoting somebody. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, a lot of quotes. Grandma said that. Right. Everything in moderation. Right. They were quoting. But it's um. What's the old saying? A little is uh, a little is medicine, and a lot is poison. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, you know what? I only left one. I only left one insulted, I guess. So, there we are. Okay, I think I got it all. And everybody had a chance. And I'm still coming with your. Uh, the two of you didn't get to try the cucumber, with, which I want to do for you. Yeah, whoever needed the salted one so they know which one it is. Yeah, she knows. She knows the unsalted. There's only one unsalted, but if somebody else wants an unsalted, I'll do one right now. They tell me. What? One unsalted? Oh, you didn't try it. Okay. You got it. We're going to do it for you. Here, I'll use this little plate for the cucumber. What's that? That's the Swiss. Oh, yeah, you're having the Swiss cheese. Now. I have it in my computer. Exactly. Now, you can literally just put one or two kernels of the salt. Salt? Kernel? You know. Granule? Yeah, granule. Thank you. Of the uh, salt, you don't need much if you do this. So just get. I'm just looking up. These are all coarse ground. You. You're welcome. Thank you for coming today. So here you are. There's two for you and one for the lady over there for the cucumber. And then can you pass it to? La oh, she's coming. Here she comes. Good. So these have gluten. The crackers. Right, here. She got her own. Oh yeah, yeah. Here, give to me. I'll do it. Oh, it already touched it. Touch I'm so sorry. No, no, we won't. I'm going to do it on a gluten-free plate. <laughs> My you. jeans are gluten-free. Don't worry. <laughs> You're safe. It's a pain. No. Buy right. these special. You can ferment any food, really, that, that I'm aware of. I think any food we can eat can be fermented, and it's a way of preserving it. And if anybody has any more questions about it, feel free to uh, contact us. I can give you a card as well, but off of Zebra Organics, zebraorganics.com. If you email me, if you email us, I'm happy to answer any questions you have or fermentation or send you videos or instructional guides on how to ferment at home. I think they can probably give you some of that too. And there's classes available here how to ferment products as well at home. And like I say, all these things that we use today, except the cucumber and avocados are 
Is there a farm? Maybe there is. Is there a farmer's market at this? Oh, yeah. Not here, but we, we we have a lot of products. Like yeah. That. Okay. The farmer's market is at like I think the lavender festival. Right. There was a guy with a booth yeah. selling, oh, right, right, selling right. produce. Mm -hmm. So, but not this time. Not not today. I don't think. Yeah. So, no. so I guess with the exception of the cucumber and avocado, least. everything's available that we did today, and you can do it at home. And like she said, just simple. If you're gluten free, what could be more gluten free than? Okay. Yeah. Just a cucumber. And a lot of people wouldn't imagine. That's why I like to do this. It's just such a simple, simple, but healthful thing. Who doesn't have to be complicated, right? Just good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Thank you to all of you. What? Oh, right. <laughs> I said everything. How many times? No, it was you. Originally, my question um, was going to be how long does it permit? But every, I said this so many times. Everybody's going to know that. <laughs> what's, yeah, everybody knows that. What's the tough question that everybody about fermentation that I took cover? I'll yeah. come up with one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell her the answer. We know how how long <laughs> curing one. takes. And just raise your hand. Don't blurt it out. So whoever gets their hand up first, you guys can watch. You're raising your hand already. Wait. Oh, you have a question? But wait for the question. This is the contest. So we all know, because I repeated so many times, how long these olives cure on the tree. How long does the lie curing process? 12 hours. Oh, but you blurred it. <laughs> Fine. Fine. All right. You said it first. That's the same as reason. You got it. Here you are. Yeah. Oh, who said it? Oh, oh, you said it. Well, I'm sorry. I thought it came out of your mouth. Yay, you got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. I was. I answered the question too. Um. Yes. Thank you. Good to see you. Catch up later. Yeah. Thank you so much. Enjoy the festival. I'll see you out there. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. So you you have these in your store? Thank you. Yes, we do. Well, no, it's here. I mean, at the. No, I know. I'm gonna see you today, but I meant for later. Because I get the Brazil honey. Yeah. You do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you know where we're at. Yeah, you know. yeah okay. We do. we do. You come there. I, yeah, I've only been there once. And okay. I called once. I don't know if you or somebody else returned my call. But Might have been your game. I'm looking for that. Awesome. But, Maybe I was, just, I was, was calling to see if you know, we, some lady. I don't thank know. Thank <laughs> you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It was I, fun. I, it was a lot of yeah, fun. I called. Randy, I kind of missed the beginning, so. Here in Palm Springs, we come up. Hi. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you. Now we don't. It's not really a store. We have a factory store because it's our facility. Yeah. But you can come uh, call and make sure we're in the front. She only usually manages a little factory store a few hours a day. But you can call and make sure we period will open the front. Oh, okay. There you are. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Absolutely. Where's my car? Yeah. Thank you. Is this going to be that was a lot of fun? Do you know the from the Dan's restaurant? Dan, we have a Dan. Dan, Dan, Dan Mulholland um, is with our company. He, oh, no, no. He's Dan owns a restaurant oh. in Cathedral City. Chef Dan. Yes. He uses our olives. That's what he, he gave, said. Daniel's like, table. Sir. Yeah. Is he here? I, yeah. Oh, he's supposed to come know. to the talk. Uh, he probably got I, distracted. During my break, I ended up sitting next to them, and I met them. Are you coming in next? Yes. Okay, I'm going to clean up fast. Sorry. Here, I'll, I'll shuffle everything over here so you can start setting up. Wow, you have burners. This is exciting. Uh, yeah, he's... She doesn't need to set up down here. They don't need this table? No, you can.